Hi everyone, today we are going to solidify our technique to find the range of a composite function starting off with this question. So typically we will be given two functions. We are first going to show that gf exists. Let's bring up the condition here. So for composite function gf to exist, the range of f must be a subset of the domain of g. Now sketching a quick graph of f with the given domain from the question, the range is negative infinity to zero inclusive, and this is a subset of the domain of g given by negative infinity to positive infinity or all the real numbers. Therefore, we conclude that the function gf exists. Now, to find the range of gf, we first need to sketch the graph of g. The range of gf is simply the range of g, but under a certain condition. The condition relates back to the first part over here, where the range of f now becomes the new domain of g, and with that restricted domain of g, simply read off the corresponding range from the graph of g itself. Thus, we write over here when we restrict the domain of g to the range of f. And this is equals to inclusive 1 to infinity. Now, take note that this is an inclusive sign because the domain of g includes 0. Be extra careful over here. Always put a curved bracket beside an infinity sign. Now, before we move on to the next example, do remember to subscribe to see more valuable math techniques that will benefit you. Alright, moving on to example 2, again we need to show that the function hg exists. So for a composite function to exist, the range of g must be a subset of the domain of h. Now let's sketch the graph of g with the given domain to help us visualize better. So the range of g is simply from 0 all the way to 8 over 3 inclusive. Do note that this is a curved bracket over here as the graph will never touch y equals to 0 whereas this is a square bracket to indicate that the range is up to and including the value 8 over 3 because of this given sign over here. Now the range of g is indeed a subset of the domain of h given by 0 to 4. Thus, we conclude that the composite function hg exists. Next, to find the range of hg, it's simply the range of h, but remember we need to restrict the domain of h to the range of g. Now let's make it a habit to do a quick sketch of the function h. Similar to the previous example, the range of g is now the domain of h. From this domain, read off or find the corresponding range of h. So it stretches from 0 to 1 inclusive. To get the value of 1, simply substitute x equals to 0 into function h. Now let's move on to the next example where we now need to prove that a composite function g f inverse exists. So bring up the condition again. For this to exist, the range of f inverse must be a subset of the domain of g. Before you jump into sketching the graph of f inverse to get its range, now do recall that the range of f inverse is equal to the domain of f. So very quickly, the range of f inverse is from negative pi over 3 to pi over 6 inclusive, and this is a subset of the domain of g, which is minus 2 and infinity. Therefore, the function g f inverse exists. Now, to get the range of g f inverse, it is simply the range of g, but remember, we must restrict the domain of g to the range of f inverse. In other words, negative pi over 3 to pi over 6 is the new domain, denoted by these red circle dots over here. So let's find the range by starting from the lowest value, which is y equals to 0. Alright, so the maximum value is actually 0 0.926, or when we substitute pi over 6 into the function g. Thus, the range of g f inverse would be 0 to 0 0.926 inclusive. Now I do hope you have learned something from this video. If you have any questions or comments, do leave them down in the comments box below. And thank you so much for watching this video.